Welcome back to MMA Nuts and Studio MMA, and we're here with two of the fighters for Saturday night, and that's Jason Young and Brad One Punch Pickett. Sorry, I'm not going to forget your nickname as well, yeah, which is Shotgun. Shotgun. Um, f you're both from England, two British fighters, yeah. 135, 145, uh, but both of you have been training in Miami. Yeah. A lot of people obviously go into to America to train. What is it about America and the training over in America versus Europe? Do you want to answer this? Okay. Or? Both of you. Okay, well, me personally, I, I started going to American. I started going to American Top Team a few years ago. Uh, it was a connection through Cage Rage, and uh, the advantage of going overseas is not always. Obviously, there's a lot more full-time professional fighters out there. Uh, and Thank you. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> there's a lot more full-time professional fighters out there, and uh, a much bigger camp. So there's a lot more people around to, to train with uh, if someone gets injured or someone has a fight if you're on a small team sometimes someone gets injured or just has a fight you don't have the same amount of training partners so American top teams full of them and also they're all very high level you don't just get MMA people there you get very you know accomplished wrestlers BJJ guys and stuff like that so it's that as well and me personally I don't know about anyone else I when I do a training camp sometimes it's nice just to get away from your day to day life you know get, get on a plane and then land somewhere and train because if you're in the same environment the whole time sometimes it's hard to go okay right I'm gonna start training for a camp now when and try and not do what you normally yeah. do on a weekly basis you know yeah. but when I land in America I know it's business and I'm there just every day is just, just train, to train yeah. that's it and and, but you've been a little bit longer than you correct you've been out to 82 you're both from Titan in, in, in London yeah. you're obviously with Semtex as well yeah, yeah. Uh, but how many fights have you been in uh, ATT for preparing uh, for well this is my second proper camp like the first time I went there uh, I went over to Canada to start off with uh, Adrenaline with Mark Kominick Sam Stout Chris Ordecki uh, some fighters like that and the, the training was great it was, um, like, it was good like everyone was really high level as well there um but i was getting a bit homesick and like i wanted to come home at one point because before and after training i was staying sort of like by myself so there's no one to talk to i only had my computer and skype and you didn't speak to mark and sam and but they weren't hanging out oh or? yeah I, I hanged out with sam stout and that and uh, chris or decky and that but you know you need your friends around you like not people you just met oh, so yeah, true. a few of my friends were in Florida doing their training camp at the same time so I was like I phoned Brad and Brad was like get a flight down here you know the, the training here is is really really good and I, I went down there and uh, as soon as I got there it's just like I found a home you know so and, and so you obviously the veteran in the UFC so to speak and been around uh, a little bit longer correct and uh, actually I've had more fights than him in the UFC that's true, right? Because you're just I had your second. WC, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but are you then, especially for the lighter guys, you're kind of the pioneer going going abroad, and uh, and obviously you are from the same camp back yeah. home. So how does it work? You go down there, you start training, and you you just bring your guys in, or how does it work? Well, you know, what aspect is it? Like when I train back home in England? No, when when you when go you to ATT, know. when you go traveling, and we oh, yeah. when I when I go to ATT, is in like there's I mean. It, there's so many people there at our weight class. We have like Mike Brown, Sir yeah. Kakai, Swedish guy. There's there's so many high level guys at our weight class that you, to train with. We somewhere. rarely get time to even train with each other. We don't where there's much. so many different people to spar with, you know. And especially we're not just training because oh, he's near my weight. We're gonna train together. We we train for our specific fighters. So he's fighting a southpaw. Yeah. I'm fighting a smaller orthodox guy. So right. you're gonna fight. Why would I spar with him? Yeah. Sometimes you do mix it, especially back like in in England at Team Titan. We do train it together a lot more because not a lot less people. And also then when you go to America, you train with them. You don't want to just go train with the same people again you want to yeah. have that little mix around and yeah. train with different people so we train enough back home so and also like he's a lot taller than Demacio Page a lot different striking than Demacio Page yeah. so he's not really great part for me and I'm not Southport and I'm shorter than the guy he's fighting so we don't really go with each other unless we have to you know yeah. right now talking about training together and preparing for opponents you're very good friends you're good friends with Hammond you, you've trained with him and that was originally your opponent, Hamid yeah. Akira, uh, Akira Akari from 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 Sweden, obviously. Um, 
How is that? F having friends fighting friends and, and preparing and so Obviously, on. Obviously, yeah, it, it's going to happen. Yes, and if you're a friendly guy, you make friends within the sport. So at the end of the day, it's a business. I, I have no animosity towards people I fight. You know, I don't like hate that guy. I want to fight him. Yeah. You know, so it's just a business, and yeah. like, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna fight each other. You know, yeah. so it's nothing like that. You know, uh, no animosity. Obviously. You know, you it's hard to like you want to root for one guy, but to be honest, I've known Jay for for a very long time, so Jay's a real, real close personal friend. I'm, right. I know Hamid; he's a friend of mine as well. But you know, f for me, Jason's my boy. You know, so yeah. I would have been on Jason's side for that one, but uh, it didn't happen, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. And, and also, and then with Sirwan, obviously, who knows Hamid very, very well, yeah, so and he's out there training with training you guys, with us. Yeah. <laughs> and sparring with us as well. Do you feel like oh, um, one day if he talks to Hamid, no, it doesn't well, matter. Well, like was said, even sharing the same uh, hotel room with me at one point. We was in the same hotel room for two weeks together but um no like i said where it's all business you know there's like brad said there's no animosity there like i don't dislike anyone that i fight you know it's a business and it's a job and it's something you have to do now we're in sweden as you can see in the background here the beautiful globe and where the two of you are going to be fighting did you know that by the way that's yes uh, the yeah, globe yeah, yeah, you yeah, did know yeah, that yeah, yeah we i thought you were about the beautiful weather How's oh yeah there? beautiful weather yeah, isn't it's it lovely and bright it's like being back home in england isn't yeah, it? yeah yeah um and uh for you it's another fight although closer to home but we got five swedish fighters who are fighting on saturday night yeah um three of them are stepping into the to the octagon for the very first time. time and uh it's at home now, one of the things we've been talking about during during the week here leading jitters. up to this, pre-fight jitters, not just fighting for the UFC, but 12, 14,000 fans wow. that you're supposed to please. Those are your fans. Can you're I fighting just at say home. something? Yes, please my, do. My first fight was in uh, Rogers Arena in, in Vancouver, and that held 30,000 people. And that was your my very first fight? First fight in the UFC. Uh, it, it, at the time, I thought it wasn't like sod solidly packed, but there was a lot of people in there. And even at half full, it's like the size of more than the arena that holds here, you know. By the end of the night, there wasn't, there was every bum in the seat. There. <laughs> it was, it was crazy. That was How nice. was it? It was wicked. It was on the Junior DeSantos and Shane Carwin card, UFC 131. Now, now we hear a lot of um, <coughs> a fight saying, oh, I don't care, you know, once I'm in the cage, you don't feel it. But let's be real, you've got 14,000 people screaming. It will affect you, right? As it's you're walking no, out. Yes, yes, no. When I when I fought in England, I, I had a big big following there, and I don't know what the side of the crowds was, but you know, I hear them trying my name and stuff. It does push you a little bit, you know, and it does get behind you. But then you put it on the other foot. If you're the opponent and the crowd's going mad for him, I've had this not in MMA so much, but in boxing. I remember one of my early boxing matches. I went to some guy's hometown, and he had like 500 people cheering for him, and he actually wound me up. He got me more aggressive. Like, come on, then, let's do this. I'm going to beat you in front of your your, your yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it works both ways. It just it depends on the individual how they, that they adapt to that situation. Yeah. Now, um, for the Swedish fighters. How much do you know about him? Have you have you seen any of him? Alexander Gustafsson obviously is yeah. becoming a little he's more a, well known there. Yeah, he's a good fighter. Um, any predictions on Saturday nights for any of them? Um, uh, yeah, there's another, another tricky one for me because I, d I like Alexander Gustafsson, but he's fighting a good teammate of mine as well. Teammate so of yours, right? And, you know, yeah. so, 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 so uh, obviously I'll be rooting for Tiago Silva there. So yeah. Sorry, guys. But, you know, <laughs> no, no, he's, well. he's a sorry. teammate of mine. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm really f I, made, I made quite good friends with Rizza. I find him really funny. We have the same sort of kind of. He has the same sort of mental. Sense of humor. Crazy, uh, as you Hamid, you know, they're <laughs> both nuts, you know, the same sort of thing, you know. Uh, yeah, he's a good guy, you know, I'll, I'll be looking out for him. And, you know, I I'll, I'll wish Sirwan was on the card, you yeah. know. I'm about to leave his sorry ass back I'll, in uh, I was Sweden. pretty upset I mean, he back didn't get in. on the card. I was pretty surprised yeah, as well, I was yeah. surprised as well. I feel that he's he was, but he's young, he, you know, he's, he's got, got plenty more time, time to grow and stuff like and that. And he's a know. great fighter as well, you know, yeah. so I, I think he'll make it. Guys, I uh, we were talking about you guys' fight yesterday in our studio show, and we were saying uh, we're looking forward to some fireworks. Wish you best of luck on Saturday night, and yeah. I know you got some training to do right now and yeah. some some weight to cut, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, get your smelly asses out of here. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> guys, All right, thank you very much for coming yeah, in, cheers, and we'll nice see you on Saturday. You. Thank you. Cheers. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers.